Okay. So for our presentation, we did the Sokotron, which is just the bottom half of a vacuum. Um, so the whole purpose of a vacuum is to remove grime and other grimy <laughs> materials from a floor or carpet. Uh, it works, there's a fan in the vacuum that blows air away from the opening, meaning that any air that's behind the fan gets drawn in, and any particles that are in that air will also get sucked in and removed from the carpet or floor or wherever the vacuum is being used. Um, as you probably know, vacuum cleaners are most common in domestic or office environments, any place where you have a carpet really. Uh, there's different settings on our vacuum cleaner for the carpet length, so if you have shag carpet, that can be different than this real short carpet we have in here. And uh, buying a vacuum cleaner nowadays will set you back somewhere between 50 and 200 <laughs> big ones. Um, big ones meaning dollars? Big ones. Yeah. Okay. Big ones. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't new. I, I'm um, sure I knew the cool lingo. Uh, this particular vacuum was a Bissell brand. Uh, this year's Melville Bissell, the founder, <laughs> that's Anna Bissell, who uh, took over as CEO shortly after Melville passed away. She's his wife? Or? Yeah. Hmm. Daughter. <coughs> Not daughter. Um, this vacuum, specifically the part that we looked at, was built using several different, different sub-assemblies that would later be combined, combined to form the bigger piece. Uh, the plastic portions were molded into pieces while the metal was cast into a fan and the motor and other small parts. Uh, the pieces were all connected using bolts, screws, and other snap-in parts. Um, a vacuum can usually last five to seven years in good condition. You can keep one for longer, but it might uh, stop working the best. And then the metal pieces can be recycled, but the plastic has to be thrown out which is unfortunate because most of it is plastic. So uh, these are our sketches of the parts on the inside of the Suck-O-Tron. Uh, the top left you'll see a, a round sketch of a wheel. It's uh, very nice, right? Thanks. Yeah, uh, and the, the wheel pin below that is what connects the wheel to what I will call, for lack of a better term, a chassis of the vacuum. We call it the beast. Uh, that's uh, the top right is uh, the sucky party tube thingy, uh, which connects. Correct me if I'm wrong. Connects the the area with the brush in it to uh, further up in the vacuum where the fan is. Um, the, and then there's the the sucky part, as it has been referred, which is actually where the brush fits inside of and where the suction is concentrated. Uh, top left, you will see the beast. Uh, it's the biggest part of the vacuum that is one solid cast piece, except for one component that wouldn't quite come off. Um, and yeah, it's one solid cast plastic piece that everything fits into. It's the you know classic vacuum shaped thing. Uh, the wheels snap on there, the brush goes in there, and the, as we called it, sucky part <laughs> fits into the bottom of that. Uh, the outside band. It's it's assimilative to a bumper. Yeah, it's like like a bumper for a car. So if you're like smashing it into your couch and you're vacuuming, it doesn't damage anything. Uh, and then we have the knob right here. Uh, the selection knob will twist and change the height of the brush to allow for vacuuming different lengths of carpet. Uh, the bottom left is called IVK LOL, uh, and it houses the back wheels of the vacuum, or the front wheels of the vacuum, if that is incorrect. Uh, the back wheels snap on the outside, but the front wheels uh, are on this hinge system here, so that with the, uh, the knob selection, it will move up and down to change the height. Uh, here's the brush here, that fits into what we call the sucky part. Uh, Here's the band. The band goes on to the brush about here and then connects it to uh, the motor. And this piece called uh, very succinctly three question marks uh, holds the brush in place. 
Okay, now uh, we're moving on to some pictures. We've got the wheel pin, the wheel, IDK, LOL, uh, the belt, which we didn't have a sketch of, but it causes the motor. We did have a sketch of it. We did? It was in the last oh, slide. Never mind. <laughs> I forgot. And of course, the band. That's a picture of the band called The Band from the 60s. They were at Woodstock. Um, up there we have the brush. This here is a picture of Charles F. Brush, inventor of the wind turbine. <laughs> sure. We've got the sucky part and the sucky part tube thingy, as well as three, three question marks. <laughs> and of course. <laughs> Aren't you proud, Mrs. Carrier? <laughs> of course. We have the people. The beast. And the beast. That's the beast from the fan lot. Who's the guy? You don't know who that is. That's Elton John. Oh. You know how in the fan lot there's a character named Benny the Jets Rodriguez? Yeah. Elton John has a famous song called Benny and the Jets. <laughs> Thanks for that uh, explanation. <laughs> It was needed. Um, Here's all of it combined together to form the Suckatron. Just a little bit of tape on there. Yeah, ignore the tape. All right. I decided to do a further investigation on one of the wheels. Um, it is a bad conductor of electricity. As you can see over there, it is not ferrous. Um, it weighs 41.4 grams, which is very light when you convert it to pounds, just 0.09 pounds. It's about <coughs> 40 centimeters cubed volume. Um, density is around one gram per centimeter cubed. And it's about 1,200 centimeters squared for surface area. And it does not succumb to the flant your hand flexure test, which means that when you try to bend it with your hands, it will go back to the position it was already in. Uh, here's my inventor model of it. See, I took careful care to get seven of these little things in there. Because that's going to make their work. Um, and just some more background info about the wheel. Uh, it's made of plastic, which in order to make a final plastic product, you have to harvest raw monomers, um, most of the time from crude oil, sometimes in a lab. And then those monomers will combine into polymers through reactions, and that just makes it stronger and more likely to hold. And then from there, you place that into a mold and you heat it up, and that will give you your final product. And after you're done using the product, the plastics have low recycling capability. Uh, I modeled the knob for some reason. That's the that next slide. Yes, here we are. This is a uh, further investigation of the part of the knob, which is a height selection tool. Is, please go back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and it, it's made of plastic as well. It's probably, probably the same type of plastic, but it's bad conductor, not ferrous, about 0 0.008 pounds mass. Uh, 0.634 cubic inches, 0.357 grams per cubic centimeter, uh, 25.096 uh, square inches, and it does not come to the hand flexure test. Uh, the knob is most likely a form of PLA plastic. We, we didn't really have the resources to actually analyze what it was. Uh, and PLA stands for polyacetic acid, or polyactic acid. Apologies. Uh, and it's it's a biodegradable thermoplastic, uh, which and it can be like very easily heat. Uh, it, it's a very low melting point, so it's very easy uh, easily molded. Um, it's made from renewable resources, uh, and it's usually cast. But it is a very common material for 3D printing. Please clap. Oh, you're done? <laughs> you did it wrong. <laughs>